to share. Would you mind if I share that with our audiences as well? Because uh, we talk a lot, you know, we share the message yeah. of crowdfunding to others. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, um, I'm not the host, though. Paul, you the host? Can you yep. hit I already, the record? I already button? hit record. Yeah. We're good. Oh, oh awesome. Great. I just so, yeah. a link to the TED Talk. If you haven't seen that, that's a four-minute overview of our work. But in a nutshell, we work on open source blueprints for civilization. <laughs> that is uh, open sourcing the critical infrastructure tools that, that allow modern civilization to happen. Um, uh -huh. Basically, it's about this distributed production and of everything. So we believe in distributing the economic power by open sourcing critical... Uh, Critical tools of society. What we, what we work on is called distributive enterprise. That means whatever, like we're, we're pretty like, I mean, exponential in a sense where whatever we do, like even the enterprise models that we develop, like right now, for example, we're developing one for replicable 3D printer workshops. Like whatever we do, we produce in these extreme builds, like we build a 3D printer in a day, we build a tractor in a single day. I mean, we've developed these parallel, crazy, uh, extreme production workflows where we can swarm on a build so you can get a tractor in one day or a house built in five days and so forth like we did with a seed eco home last year which we crowdfunded for on Kickstarter but um, what the there's the project is complex and right now one of the foci is getting a, a robust development team in place so kind of think of we want to be for hardware where Linux is today for the back end of the internet for software, for Linux operating system. Uh -huh. So my goal is to have to develop 4,000 developers within a decade. So we're talking about Linux timescale. It took them about a decade to, to get 4,000 developers contributing to their project, meaning uh -huh. like a billion dollars worth of contributions per year that they currently do. That's our uh, big, hairy, audacious goal, basically to, to be the, an open source mechanism for product development in general that any, any company can take on. So we're developing basically crowd-sourced, collaborative open source techniques, how we develop hardware. So, and the way we're bootstrap funding it right now is by running workshops. We, we run a workshop where say 12 or 24 people show up and they build their own 3D printer. And that's how we bootstrap our existence right now. Cool. Uh, what I was thinking specifically right now, I mean, we can talk about the grand vision, but it's like, Execution wise, I don't know how to sell it because yeah. the, it involves the buildup of a significant volunteer team. And we're very explicit about volunteer because we don't think you can buy the revolution and all of that kind of stuff. Yep. Yep. But, um, but the thing I was looking for, I mean, very simple entry level project for, for the Hero X uh -huh. was to, to design the sim, uh, an open source cordless power tool construction set, basically like a 3D printed cordless drill. Why? Because we use a lot of drills. We go through drills a lot. Um, they're a throwaway item. So we're talking about, first of all, cordless drills are a billion dollar industry in the United States alone. We'd okay. like to open source that so that many people can start manufacturing cordless drills. So think about it, the open source micro factory. I was, mm -hmm. I was thinking about calling it like the open source micro factory challenge. Uh -huh. But the idea there is to start with a very simple thing. Let's, let's get like, you know, like 100K for a design challenge on a cordless drill and de develop a professional level drill that's fully open source, uh -huh. but definitely possibly up to the 3D printed electric motor. They've actually 3D printed electric motor cores with magnetic PLA which nice. actually work for small applications, things like that. So wow. I was thinking of the cordless power tool construction set design challenge, but even more narrow than that, just the cordless, uh, cordless, uh, cordless drill challenge. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so that, that's where I was thinking that as, as, as a start. I love it. And get some feedback, like whether that's, that's, um, you know, that's something we can sell. I think we can definitely sell it one on an aspect that this is about the lifetime design drill. If you buy this, if you make this yourself, if you make it yourself, you have you can have it for a lifetime because you can service it. So it's so yeah. it's really about at least a tenfold factor of efficiency right there in terms of resource use and so forth. So it's sellable to the eco crowd and so such. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. That's great. Um, so so that was really great. I'm gonna I'm gonna springboard off of that in a second. 
Um, the now back to the 12 weeks. So what, what is there? What else is there in that? Sorry, 12 months. What else is there that, um, you know, if you knew you couldn't fail, what would you like to see accomplished in 12 months for your organization? We have a full product release of the tractor, which involves the full product release of the CNC torch table, which is, we've built the open source CNC torch table. We're cutting out our own metal with it and stuff like that. But actually in October 30, we're building our next iteration of the tractor, um, which is going to be a 64 horsepower tractor that we build in three days during a workshop. But to take that to a full product release, because once again, I mean, tractors, that's, you know, that's almost a you know, many billion dollar industry uh -huh. right there. So, uh -huh. I mean, but once again, it's, Right now, we have 20 people on our development team, people who uh -huh. contribute to hours of work per week. Uh -huh. uh, to get there, we're seeing that, of course, you know, you can get to the 95% easy. We thought we had it in a bag, but of course, that, not, that last mile problem is there. So that's why we need to, we wanted uh -huh. to build up the team. And uh -huh. the, the QRX would also be a great way that, okay, uh, do the challenge, but also join our team and then uh -huh. fund it too. Uh -huh. Yep, so, absolutely. Yep. Yeah. It's a, it's a no-brainer, but... Um, so I have one clarifying question. When you said your developers, you don't mean software developers, do you? Or do you mean? No, you these mean are like, hardware developers. We teach right, them right. a fully yeah. open source CAD gotcha. design tool yeah. chain. Yeah. Uh, I love it. Yeah, that's great. Um, it's atoms, not electrons. Atoms, yeah. It's a big green field, and it's it's um, it um, the world of atoms needs organizations like you guys complementing the world of electrons which is overweighted um, um, because at the end of the day, you need, you know, people need physical things, right? Like if we're going to lift the world right. up in a sustainable way, I, I totally get what you're doing. Um, well, I frame, you, I, frame it, I frame it as that the, the physical economy is still 80% of the economy. Yeah. So like while Google is big, Google and Apple are big, but that's like 20%. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's a, just such a target rich environment. Um, have you talked to XPRIZE at all I haven't. about this? Okay. No. That's that's something that might be worth doing. Um, but let's um, let, let's let's jump into. Let me yeah. Share my, and let Peter screen. Peter briefly do it in the TED talk. So I'm also a TED fellow, and uh, I've been in that crowd. But so far, it was actually somewhat disappointing in a sense that. Very few people get this because, I mean, it's absolutely ex exponential. And it's like, okay, we're going to end artificial scarcity, of course, and then uh -huh. that's not an easy challenge. It's, it's, lately, I've been learning a lot about the shift from vision to execution and all that. But, yeah, haven't been able to sell the message and get the proper support for this yet. Uh -huh. uh, I think QRX could be a, you know, a great step that we can take on this. But otherwise, it's like ass in the grass and just build up the development team and get the development velocity up yep. is, is kind of yep. my approach. No, that yeah. sounds really great. Great. Yeah. Okay. Well, let me uh, let me just run. So I'm gonna I'm gonna yeah. hop, skip, and jump a little because we've covered some ground. Okay. Yeah. Um, can you see my screen? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. So um, yeah. So basically, um, you know, this this kind of you know is Herox in a nutshell, right? So we're we're the social network yeah. for work. We're I actually prefer the word social network for vocation because vocation is hmm. is the work you're called to do. Right. Oh yes. Uh, yeah. Good and, and yeah, because work work has a lot of negative meanings as well. And this is about you know people playing the music inside them, um, and getting paid to do it. Um, we're creating that platform. The the fundamental essence of it is we reverse the the flow the the power. So it's not um, organizations hiring people. It's people hiring organizational problems. The, the organizations publish the problems. The people hire the problems. That makes sense. Uh, I'm kind of missing that. People hiring the problems. Can you can you kind of yeah. go through that? So, in the in traditional, you know, la the traditional labor market, an organization would go and hire people to do work. Yeah. Right? Um, they clear. they pick they pick the people, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so let's let's switch swap the word pick for the word hire, right? So okay. in traditional organizations, pick the people. In crowdsourcing, the people pick the organizations. Yeah. yeah. Right? So they say, I'm going to work on that problem because yep. I can solve that problem. It doesn't matter if they're a 17-year-old in Turkey, mm -hmm. no credentials mm -hmm. in 3D printing. If they've got a passion and a talent, 
um, they can, nobody's going to stop them from participating and they can win on their pure merits. You see what I'm saying? Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. That's so that's true. ultimately what we create. So for organizations, it's, it's truly exponential labor with no recruiting, no managing and a pay for success model. Um, mm -hmm. For individuals, they get to follow their passions. Um, they get to work on that stuff. It's, it's really great. Um, so, um, you know, right. this is, I'll, you know, we've been doing it for a while. Um, like we spun out of the X prize, like I mentioned, you know, mm -hmm. we're now, we, we now have well over $20 million in prize capital on our platform. We've got a great, mm -hmm. um, a great, uh, client list, lots of nonprofits, lots of for profits, lots of success. We bring credibility to, every crowdsourcing conversation with our partners. Um, and so we can bring a lot of value there. Um, I think, I think you got, you get this, you, know, you get this, the work's being disrupted and you get the rate of changes high and, and um, there's a lot of angst there. This is more for profit stuff, but um, that once you, once you connect things to a digital network, they follow exponential curves, but organizations still have linear operational curves. Right. Um, so crowdsourcing brings exponential labor to the to the table. That's the essence yeah. of what we do. Um, you know, this is a, a really great uh, quote I like that we use um, um, from Yakai okay. Bentkler. I, I always screw up his name, but um, uh, he's uh, um, yeah. you know talking a lot about this stuff. Um, so uh, you know we've covered crowdsourcing, but basically. You know, it's what I said earlier. It's, you know, you, you enlist a group of people uh, by sharing your problem and they self-select. What we focus on is, um, you know, is gamifying it. So creating you know, the Herox platform, um, you know, creates that structure and uh, creates a user experience where it's self-selecting, self-organizing, self-managing, and self-motivating. Um, and we know how to do that really, really well. Just like YouTube knows how to stream videos globally, we know how to make this work. Um, our sandbox is um, all of knowledge work, uh, which includes everything you've just described. It's, you know, you're, you're hiring brains, okay? Um, and so that's um, kind of our space. And this is, this, is the, this is the future that we see, is that um, crowdsourcing is the third form of labor. Um, and um, doesn't take away from the other two, just like, you know, Wi-Fi didn't replace Ethernet. Wi-Fi made Ethernet more valuable. Um, um, crowdsourcing doesn't, you know, take away in-house people. It makes them more valuable by unblocking them and giving them more mm -hmm. work to do, more value to create. Make sense so far? I like it. Yeah. 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 The, if you look around, you'll see crowdsourcing is everywhere. Um, there's already, there's a vibrant um, ecosystem of crowdsourcing. Um, um, it's, you know, they're, they're, there's a, they're mostly paywalled, which we don't like. Um, oops, they're mostly paywalled and it's all fragmented and, and you, you, can't, you can't break your, what you need to do into these silos. So you have like coding over here and, you know, your 3D printing over there. So that these vertical paywalled models um, aren't the longer, longer term strategy, just like with Airbnb, you know, and you go to Airbnb and rent a teepee or a castle or a tree house, right? Yeah. Um, it wouldn't make sense to have, you know, the tree house, um, you know, uh, um, um, platform and the castle platform because that's not the way the world works. Um, so that's really our vision. Our vision is this, that organizations look like this, this, the, on the left is what I call the Mad Men model, which is you know where all your plans happen in in private. You bring people into your private space. You, they do the work. Um, they have to have all the answers. Um, and in a linear world, that worked really well. Um, yeah. But but we now you, are you familiar with Glassdoor? With what Glassdoor? Yeah. Uh, no. Uh, go to glassdoor.com and it, you'll, it's a bit of a, it'll be an eye opener for you. Um, it's basically it's showing you that the the right is already happening, whether CEOs like it or not. Um, the, the the there's a conversation going on around each organization. Uh, Glassdoor is like Yelp for 
work environments, for cultures and for leadership. Um, mm -hmm. And so people are sharing um, their experiences, they're engaging on social media. Um, so our whole point is, since it's happening anyways, why don't you use it as a business tool? Why don't you engage with the crowd and ask them to do work for you? It's kind of a no-brainer. Um, this is the way we show it to the consultants and to the you know, MBA dudes, um, which is, you know, yeah, everybody's talking about the, the software stuff, the AI and robots and all that, but there's a really great fit here for crowdsourcing, um, and you can kind of just read through these uh, and kind of see, you know, you can take any, any task, any job, and you can say, okay, you know, should this be done in-house? Should I freelance it? Should I crowdsource it? Or is there AI for it? Right. That makes sense? Mm-hmm. Great. Um, so, um, so that kind of gets to what, what we bring to the table. Like I said, there's already a lot of crowdsourcing platforms that are out there. And so we bring what we call crowdsourcing 2.0, um, which is this social network and so think of it this way, um, if you were to, were to work with, um, you know, another uh, crowdsourcing platform, um, typically it's a paywalled community. You, you pay to get access, you put your project on their platform, they do the work, mm -hmm. away you go. Um, we, we let you create your own crowdsourcing homepage, just like a LinkedIn page, where all your crowdsourcing, which is your crowdsourcing, it's just like a, it's like a YouTube you know, it's like if you had a YouTube channel, you know, and you can do as much crowdsourcing as you want um, on that page. Um, and so this is what it looks like, for example, for NASA, right? So, in fact, why don't I just flip over? I'll just show you the, the actual. Oh, wow. So you put a whole there. Each group is putting up a whole bunch of challenges. Yeah. So you could, you know, you could launch 10 challenges, right? That's awesome. And, oh, and nice. just, just, yeah, just like a blogger, a blogger creates a following um, um, for the for the, the the blog itself, not for each article, right? Um, yeah. We want to our our platform is designed to let you build a crowd, feeding oh. just like a blogger feeds his following by publishing blog posts. And if you do it slowly, your following grows slowly. If you do it fast, your following grows fast. If you wow. blog, blog about great ideas, um, more people come. If you blog about lame ideas, less people come. So crowdsourcing is the same way. Um, if you, you know, post your, your, your projects and you promote them and they're exciting and interesting, a lot of people will show up. Um, and, you know, that's kind of how we work. Let me just flip over nice. to the, 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 the website itself and I'll show you, you know, some of the work that we're doing. Um, you know, so you'll see, you know, if I go here again to um, – NASA, right? So, you know, we've got, here's their homepage, um, and they've got all these different projects that they're working on. Huh. Um, yeah, very diverse. Um, you know, this one was a, a video um, production contest to use um, NASA content in, in a video. And, you know, they had a judging panel, and they awarded $26,000 to all of these winners. Every, you know, these, all these, these guys all got cash so they all got a fraction of the 26,000. Uh, so Tommy, six, can I ask you so that 26k was that also crowdfunded through through HeroX? No, no NASA, no NASA wrote a check, right? Most okay. of these most of these are 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 um, you know, they they wrote a check. The um, the I'll get into the nonprofits in a second. Um, um, let me um, um, uh, let me, oh, I want to, I know what I want to show you. So uh, look, let's look at this one. So this, this was a great one um, that we did. Um, so basically for, for about eight years, um, NASA has been trying to figure out how to poop in space. Like, like, <laughs> don't, don't worry, they've got it on the space station, but it's, it's big. It's like, it's like, it's like larger than a, a washing machine and it's messy. And I mean, messy. I can send you video if you want. Um, but, um, they, they, they need, um, they basically need a solution that fits into a spacesuit, like the smartphone of a toilet, right? Oh, wow. Zero G because, um, to get to Mars, um, people need to be able to stay in spacesuits because of radiation for uh, at least five days. 
Um, and I, don't, I wouldn't want to hold number two for five days. So, so <laughs> they've been trying to figure out this problem um, internally, right? Get their internal engineers have been coming up with designs. Um, they decided to crowdsource it. Um, in 45 days, we got 2,000 engineers, inventors, scientists, students, tinkerers, crazy people um, to try to solve this problem. 20,000, okay? Now, the grand prize was $15,000. There's three prizes, 15, 10, and 5, okay? Um, the, in fact, there's a good infographic here. Uh, where is it? It would be under updates, right? This is in... Did, uh, did NASA do this infographic or did we do it, Paul? That's, uh, that's Maureen right there. That's us. Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah. So, so this is some great stats. So 20,000 competitors, okay, um, to solve this problem. And, but here's the, what I really love. They received 5,000 submissions. That's a pretty high follow-through rate. It just shows how, how engaged the crowd is, right? It's not a 1% right. follow-through rate, right? It's, 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 a, it's a high follow-through. And we see these, these type of follow-through rates um, across the spectrum, right? Um, wow. People are working hard. They're working hard on this stuff. And listen, it, when you join this, this project and there's already 19,999 other competitors, you're not doing it because you think you're going to win. You're not doing it for the money, right? You know, you're doing it um, because... Um, it's, it's, it's your vocation calling. Like you, you, you want to solve that. You want to participate. Right. And this isn't even a nonprofit. This is a for-profit or, well, I guess it's, I don't know. Is it, this, it's, um, it's, can you explain it's this? kind of nonprofit. Is, Go ahead. Sorry. So is this, I was thinking about that. Is the psychology there that, is that glory? Is that like ego or yeah, is it? Yeah. Recognition. Oh. Recognition is a big one. Um, listen, the, the, the winning, the winning team. Oh, let me go back. The winning team, this is, I really like this. So let me, uh, let me specify that question. Is it intrinsic motivation like Daniel Pink or is this yeah, fame? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all intrinsic motivation. Um, the extrinsic, um, the extrinsic motivation is, is, is ineffective. The, the, we're still, you know, researching this and are, and coming up with a better way to articulate it, but the cash mm -hmm. prize is, 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 is like an authenticity statement, right? If you said, you know, fix this problem, but I'm, I'm not going to offer anything to anybody, it's just it's an inauthentic ah. request, right? Okay. But they're okay. not doing it because they want to win the prize or, you know, you know what I mean? Um, it's, okay. it, or, or they, may, they may say to themselves that, that there's a TED talk I can send you about this. They may say to themselves they're doing it to win the money, but they're not really doing it to win the money. Um, they're doing it um, because... The, the future, um, you know, the future person they want to be is a person who's participated in this, right? Nice, nice. So okay. you're able to tap the psychology effectively. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mm. And so, you know, here's, here's the team lead for one of the winning teams, right? Um, and you can see here, so he's a physician engineer transitioning to a career uh, in biomedical engineering and biotechnology, right? So... This is not a person NASA would have hired, right? Yeah. But this is the person that came up with the, the, winning, the winning solution. And I, mm. I, really liked, I really liked this one. So this is, uh, was on the team as well. Uh, general dentist, chemical engineer, artist, and coffee enthusiast. Let me ask you this. Was the solution actually open source or was it privatized by NASA? Um, well, NASA, NASA's uh, by mandate, NASA is, I'm not sure if it's open source, but it's public sector. So they share, um, they share their, their product pretty openly. I'm not sure how exactly that works. They've got a structure for it, but this is public yeah. sector. So it's, it's yeah. got parallels, but open source is, is a really great, um, like th there's a, you've, you've already got a, a, a bunch of intrinsic motivation right there. So yeah. your need to finance the prize amount is greatly mitigated um, because of that, right? Um, and so, like I said, so we create these, these pages. Um, you can white label them as well. Um, I can uh, go to the, if I go to MIT, right? They've got uh, white label, solve. By the way, I was noticing our search stuff was acting a little funny, Paul. I might want to look at that, but so this is, this is white label. You can see here. Uh, pardon me. How much do you guys actually contribute to this kind of here? Is this largely user contributions, or do you curate this heavily and provide? We, like, what kind of support do you provide for people 
posting the challenges. Well, well, it's good that you've met us now because we're, now we're we're very hands on um, with because we're you know y if you were to work with us you'd be an early adopter. So we have a team that works with you. Now you have to do the heavy lifting, but we advise you. We'll we'll help you. Mm -hmm. um, you know, just like p the way Kickstarter probably did it when they were small and young. Now you know you wouldn't be able to get much help from them um, right. because just of scale. But right now, you know, we're really looking for for projects like yours um, to put on our site because you know we're 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 sending a message out to the world saying this is the third form of labor, and our job is to get this to be socialized, kind of like Airbnb got you know, staying in a stranger's house or, you know, having some stranger from a foreign country show up, you know, at odd hours at your front door expecting to sleep in your daughter's bed, you know, um, they made that socially acceptable, um, you know, mm. and, and um, it, it, it's amazing how, how powerful that can be if you think about it, right? Um, yeah. yeah. So, um, so that's, you know, our job is to get to that critical mass of social credibility. Your job is to be an early adopter and, and we won't win if, if your projects aren't successful. So, um, you have to be prepared to do the heavy lifting, but, but we'll, we'll help you. Um, for our for-profit clients, you know, we have a whole bevy of services like, you know, our, our uh, Coca-Cola, like we have a Coca-Cola project here. Um, you know, and, and they, they, you know, they outsourced it all to us. You know, we, you know, we did a big consulting engagement and got paid a lot of money to do all this various stuff. But we came up with a lot of the, the, the work here. Um, and, um, you know, they've, they've been very successful. They've actually launched two projects. They got so excited. They, they've launched two projects. And yeah. I believe we've got about 4,000 um, um, innovators that are working on these two projects for Coca-Cola. Um, really quite a, a, incredible. Um, in terms of the, the things that we're doing. Um, and so, so basically, yeah, so getting back to solve, uh, where was that, the MIT one? Um, so there's... So let me ask so, you this, does this address the, the issue where if you don't have money, you could still do this? Yep. So for example, yep. are, what are our costs? Like for example, if, if we post something, are there upfront costs? No. Or is it all at no. the back? There's no upfront costs um, unless you want to hire us to do some services work. There's no upfront costs. It's like Kickstarter. We only we, we, we charge a success fee on the back end if your project's a success. If your project's not a success, we, we don't charge you anything. Um, so um, so let you get started. Mm -hmm. And we also support unfunded uh, projects for nonprofits for social projects, unfunded. So you can you can design them, you can launch them, you can even set a prize amount it's unfunded and then you can go crowdfunding and also go to donors because corporate sponsors, I don't have to tell you that if you do a good job designing, you know, a, a 25 K, you know, proof of concept or design challenge. And by the way, the prize amount doesn't have to be as big as you think, right? Um, you know, if you come up with a good design and you go to some corporate sponsors and say, Hey, how would you like to, you know, uh, sponsor this? Um, um, you'll you'd be surprised um, at how easy it is to get them to buy in. If it, it's you've got to go to the people who would love to they'd love to have their brand affiliated with your project, okay? And they can also uh -huh. be very much attracted by the IP, even though you're open source. They they still be attracted by participating, getting close to it, and 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 being able to see the IP. And they'd also get very excited about being able to curate the crowdsourcing projects so that they can, um, you know, um, get, um, you know, their, the future that they want to have happen show up in the crowdsourcing, which can often overlap with your future, right? So you can get a lot of co-sponsorship um, working that way. Do you think, for example, because we're building this solar slash charcoal gas powered tractor, eco tractor, we call it, I mean, okay, do you think it's realistic that 12 months from now, if we post, post the tractor challenge, we could get a, you know, like a, an equivalent to a, a John Deere or whatever, a Bobcat kind of a tractor, or, or this is uh, kind of stretching it? Do you think that 12 months is realistic? You mean in terms of the, well, in, in terms of the technical feasibility of it? As far as the, the technical due diligence required to do a, design a really good product, because it's going to take a lot of hours. 
Yeah, so you know, we can't help you with that because we're not experts in it. Um, we, I can tell you that when we do work on technically challenging projects, we, we, um, you know, we have a, a process that we can share with you that around um, doing the, the, the research, um, interfacing with the subject matter experts, which we can also help source um, mm -hmm. so that you can, because the, the thing about the crowd is they can, you know, they're human beings, right? So, so there's nothing yeah. the crowd, there's nothing magical about the crowd. You're, just, you're right. just parallelizing it, right? So rather than hiring one person to do it, you get a thousand people to yeah. like, try to do it. So you're optimizing yeah. for the best solution and you're only paying for the best solution. Um, but at the end of the day, you're still dealing with the laws of physics and the realities of what, of what people have access to. What I'll tell you for sure is that crowdsourcing will move you further faster than any yeah. other approach that I can think of. Right, right. Mm -hmm. And yeah. how specifically, see the thing that we do is unique is that, for example, we use FreeCAD, which is an open source CAD software. Do you think we're going to shoot ourselves in the foot if we require, because all our work in order to be fully collaborative and put no barriers upon collaboration and further derivatives, we use open source software like FreeCAD. Is it realistic yep. to say, okay, well, you've got to design it in FreeCAD because that way it's fully open source and anyone on this planet can yeah. build and replicate because they can download the blueprints in FreeCAD and stuff. Yeah, so that, that's a good... Putting restrictions is bad. Well, like so the, yeah, so the beauty, of, the beauty of Herox is that, you know, it's like a YouTube video. You get to, you get to set the content as long as it's ethical, legal, and safe. Um, we're good. Um, mm -hmm. But we, we have a challenge success team that advises on those decisions for you know for free as part of our support um, so they would they would advise you on that my view is um, you have to ask the question um, you know what would be better in terms of my crowdsourcing to make that a requirement or make that a recommendation right and okay. so you might want to you know you one model is you have to do it this way um, the other model might be um, you know, supporting, you can do it a couple different ways, but you could do it as a, a two track model. So you can have the open source track and then you have like the, you know, whatever you want to call it, the, the corporate tech stack track. If you want to bring that crowd to the table, you know, if you want to bring uh, vendors to the table, because you'd be surprised a lot of projects, vendors will come like companies, mm -hmm. like startups and, and even established companies will come um, because they want to apply their, their product to your problem, right? Um, yeah. Um, that happens a lot. Um, so you usually want to bias towards um, having few rules, right? Be as open as possible, have few rules, carefully select those rules because you're, you're going to get what you ask for from the crowd. So you, you definitely want to create hard rules, but you don't want to create too many rules. And then um, otherwise you can create a lot of recommendations um, um, and, um, and you can even, for certain things, you can even say things like, you know, the score out of a hundred points to score your solution, um, 10 points mm -hmm. are for open, your open source usage, right? Mm -hmm. So, so if it's no open source, you get zero out of 10, if it's 50% open source, you get five out of 10, you know, so there's, there's, mm -hmm. those are a lot of those options. Paul, did I capture that well? Cause he's, yeah, he's sure. I was, I was just going to jump in to say that you can nudge people with those scores for sure. And that uh, mm -hmm. you, know, you can give people that flexibility to still win if it's not open source, but uh, give them some bonus points if they do. Yeah. Remember this is your workforce. So you actually get to engage with them and, and talk to them and, and, and nudge them um, um, mm. in, 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 in a way that's pretty effective. The other, you know, there's other, a lot of other things you can do, um, you know, um, with a, uh, like a uh, this tractor type thing, you can you could you know put your current specs online and say, hey, make it half the cost. Make mm -hmm. it half the cost. Like here, here's how far we got. Make it yeah. make it half the cost, or 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 you know make it twice as fast to make, or re you know reduce the moving parts. You know what I mean? So there's there's right. a lot of it's it, think of it as co innovation, right? We're not we're yeah. not getting rid of your your internal. Uh, skill sets or the work you've already done, this is complementary to the work you've already done. Um, yeah. Yeah. And so the, I like the cordless drill one is a really great one. And, um, and by the way, um, 
we 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 have a this is tentative so i can't promise this but we have a we have a um we're working with a nonprofit in china the, mm -hmm. the government has given them a license to promote crowdsourcing in in um all of the chinese um colleges and universities um wow. they yeah they want to bring innovation projects to the students because the chinese students are not learning creative thinking, design thinking, and innovation very well, right? Would this be Ben Ku at Tsinghua University? Uh, no. I know not. one one dude there who's pushing open source there. Okay, but anyway. Yeah, yeah. It, they I, they could be um, co collaborating in this in this. Um, it's with the Shanghai. Uh, I forget the name of the organization, but it's a, it's the Shanghai Student okay. Services Group huh. that that's creating a, a nonprofit foundation to do this. My point is, is that, um, you know, you could take this cordless drill project, partner up with them, they could publish that on their, um, um, you know, their Chinese facing um, um, website. Um, and you could publish it on your, on your page globally. Um, and it could do some really cool stuff. Um, there's a especially for nonprofits where you don't want to, you, you, there's no issue about proprietary ownership of the work product. Um, right. There's a network effect, um, meaning the more sponsors you bring on, the more promoters you bring, um, the better your project. So you, you, you don't need to think about it like it has to be, um, you know, only you promoting it. You could, you can actually get a lot of different organizations um, to promote it. Um, and the, well, um, I mean, that's, Absolutely. I mean, that's, that's our strong, strong point. I think our social capital is pretty high in general. So, I mean, that's, that's how we operate. Yeah. That'd yeah, be awesome. You, yeah. And you see here, this is an example, right? So NTL, um, you know, they, they, they're a sponsor, but these guys are also a sponsor, United States Special Operations Command, which sounds really military-ish, but, um, you know, but they, these are two organizations supporting the same um, um, project. So, so you can, you can create a logo cloud here, um, of supporters. Now, when people go to your site, yeah. they'll they'll see it's your project, and you be the you'd be the 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 lead sponsor for the project forever and always. And then the other thing I'll add is that um, just like you can embed YouTube videos on your own website, um, you can embed these crowdsourcing projects on your own homepage. Um, so awesome. um, yeah, so yeah, you embed it. Yeah, yeah, because it's your project. Awesome. It's not our it's not our project, right? We're the platform, but it's your project. So, yeah, yeah no, this is makes sense pretty so amazing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so I, I, I think it can really help. And then the crowdfunding side, you know, yeah. So then you can, you can, um, you could, for example, come up with a challenge idea, um, publish it unfunded, um, uh, start a crowdfunding campaign to raise the capital, um, go to a corporate sponsor, um, now the playbook I've seen work best is you go to a corporate sponsor. And you, so let's say you're raising 20 grand, go to a corporate sponsor and say, we'd love to, we want you to write a $10,000 check. What we want to do is we want to go to the crowd funders and say for every dollar crowdfunded, this amazing organization has pledged to match dollar for dollar the um, investment. So if you give us Mr. Crowdfunding crowd person, if you give us $10, it's actually going to be $20 because of this amazing brand who's supporting this project. Um, and then of course you get the brand to, to promote it as well. So you're just extending your reach to crowdfunding. Um, if you pick the right company, the employees will fricking raise the money. I'm sure. Yeah. Um, hey, are you, are you talking about where you approach the company saying this is conditional upon like they'll match, but they don't have to pay out until so many people donate. Yeah. And it's like a matching thing on both sides. Yeah, it, 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 it can be, it could be matching. It could be open ended or closed. Meaning, you know, if it's, mm -hmm. if it's 10 grand that you're asking for them and, and, and they're, they're going to dollar match crowdfunding, you know, it could be, we'll raise as much as we can and we keep what we've raised, or it could be only if we get to the 10 grand, will will you write a check? You can do it either way. Um, um, for a prize amount, you typically would want to, you know, get to that, that number. Um, and um, yeah, and then, you know, then create a stretch goal that if we raise more than 10 grand, um, you'll, that the, the excess will go to fund this second crowdsourcing project, right? 
Um, yeah. And so, yeah. you know, that model I think would work really well, especially if you pick something that's sexy. Um, and what I mean by that is, you know, people crowdfund, like what's the, mo the, the fundamental motivation for crowdfunding is real simple. Um, I want to live in a world where whatever is promised from that crowdfunding project, where that's real. I want to live in a world where smart watches are real. I want to live in a world where 3D printing is open sourced. I want to live in a world. So people are funding a, uh, their future aspirational yeah. world, right? So yeah. the way you need yeah. to do your talking to them is imagine a world, you know, just like a TED talk, right? Imagine a world, you know, where, where this is possible, right? Um, well, you know, that's the big vision. Um, our first step that we've decided to take is this, you know, cordless drill challenge or, or this, you know, tractor, um, uh, you know, building challenge or whatever. And this is what we're going to accomplish. This is how much money we need from you. Um, um, you know, um, also bring your talents and join our crowd, you know, join our crowd. If you want to help build it, you know, join our crowd. If you want to help fund it, fund our crowd so you can do both that um, that's far more superior an approach to just the crowdfunding part where people, you know, it's like crowdfunding without crowdsourcing is kind of like, you know, keeping the problem behind a, a glass window. They can see it, but they can't get in. They can't engage with it. They can just slide a bill under right. the glass. Right. <laughs> right. How would you suggest that we structure since we run physical extreme build workshops on site and other locations, like how do we integrate the reward of, okay, now you can participate in actual build into that. How would you suggest that happens? So, um, well, hey, Christian, uh, you, yeah, maybe, maybe go to the, the Lando Lakes project. Yeah. Let's do that. And yeah. So, can, so you, yeah, I was just going to say, so Lando Lakes, uh, wanted to see how a drone might work that is more autonomous that can be used in farming. Uh, they wanted to, to have a in-person fly off. Uh, for, for the people who are competing. So what they did was they had people submit uh, their submissions, a video explanation of how oh, it works, wow. what it looks yeah. like. And then part of the prize was they're actually going to fly people to that in, in person fly off and uh, let them compete for the final prize. Um, wow. They're going to have press on site. They're going to put out a press release that says we invited these people. It's this huge opportunity for the people competing to go uh, break some FAA rules that are allowed in this very particular place and get some press mm -hmm. about the cool autonomous stuff that they can do. Uh, so uh, one of the things, especially in the nonprofit world and in the event consideration world is that attendance at one of these like in-person builds or mm -hmm. in-person competitions, like that's a prize. If you can sponsor yeah, them to absolutely. come, pay for their flight, get them in person, get some press about all the cool work they're doing on site, that's your prize. You don't need a hundred thousand dollars. You just need to get them to that place. And that's awesome for them. Exactly. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Absolutely. So, no, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So mm -hmm. your head's probably spinning already. Right. Um, and I've held back a lot of ideas. Um, the, 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 the thing to think about is, you know, this, so we've kind of shown you a new tool, new business tool, a new, a new yeah. tool for you. Um, I would take some time to, to, you know, think through your strategy and ask the question, how can crowdsourcing, you know, be applied? Um, and then look at kind of what, what, like, what would be your kind of first project or projects that you'd like to, to, um, um, start elaborating on. And then we can schedule a follow-up with our challenge success team. Now, Paul and Mackenzie are both on that team, but we basically will, you know, um, riff on that idea, help you, um, you know, um, make those basic decisions. We also have a lot of um, training material we can share as well. Um, and we also run webinars. In fact, I think there's a webinar coming up. Is it, why isn't it not showing up here? Is it, uh, we have a webinar, don't we? Yeah, I think there's one coming up, but we also have a link to the last one we can share. So that yeah. you can you'll watch yeah, through so, sort of a quick start guide. Yeah, on how to there you help. go. Uh, upcoming web, building a movement. Tomorrow yeah. at 11.30, building a movement. That sounds pretty apropos, right? Yeah. Yeah, we do yeah. talk about creating movement entrepreneurs. Yeah. Our long-term vision is we're an education organization. We actually create immersion training for doing all this stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 And so, you know, then, 
you know, once you start getting crowdsourcing in your mind and kind of your, your wrap your brain around it more, you'll start seeing um, where um, your model can be, you know, building a crowd around your project. Um, they're basically volunteers at a certain, to a certain extent. Right. Um, and then you can leverage that crowd to do more and more things. And then you can do things like, let's say you want to, you need to select a site where you're going to build the tractor and, you know, and, you know, run it for, you know, like, I don't know, like, like um, plow an acre, right? You can, you can crowdsource that. You can say, Hey, you know, if you've got a community and you want to, you'd like to, to host, you know, this, yeah. this project, you know, you can, you can have submission, you can have a submission process there. So there's a way to, to, you know, take all your asks, um, sorry, all the, the, the things that need to happen, convert them into asks for the crowd. Yeah. And especially if you do them with some risk management, you can kind of do them where plan A is we, we, found a, we find a site, we crowdsource a site for our test that has you know, support from a university or whatever. Um, plan B is if that doesn't happen by the deadline, you know, we've got uh, a place where you know, we've got some backup options, right? So you can kind of mix the internal you know, innovation and the external innovation um, um, together um, to make that work. But we can talk all, all about that later. Uh, what I would recommend is that you, we crawl before we walk, before we run, um, because once you get a little bit more comfort with crowdsourcing as a tool um, by picking some low hanging fruit, you'll, you'll quickly start getting comfortable with it. No different than, you know, how, when the first time you started hiring freelancers online, it was kind of new and scary and you quickly right. got comfortable with it. Right. We've yeah. used GrabCAD for a couple of challenges. You know GrabCAD? Yep. Yeah, we know them. We yeah, absolutely. Them. I mean, yeah, I mean, we, I mean, we're all about crowd, crowdsourcing, so that's yeah. what we did. So I think about, but okay, but talking about like, how attractive do you think the cord, the open source 3D printed cordless drill is? Do you think that would be a good entry level project? Yeah. So uh, I think so. Um, you, you'd have to you're the better one to answer it because you know, you know, you've been thinking about this, this space, the zeitgeist on the internet more. Yeah. Um, and the, you know, the, the question you want to ask, another way to ask it is, you know, like if you wanted to grab a low hanging fruit crowdsourcing project, you know, ask like, what would be the, the most attractive, you know, project I could give people that is consistent with our, our mission. Um, that one sounds pretty good because it's something that could be done, uh, you know, on a, on a work desk, like on a shop desk or shop, whatever it's called. Right. It doesn't require a huge yeah. amount of space. Um, so I, I think that's great. Um, the, um, with open source, it, it can become a collaborative process. Um, and, um, and, you know, and just even providing recognition, a recognition reward, a lot, there could still mm -hmm. be a cash reward, but a recognition reward. Um, is something that can be really great. And you can even, I don't know if there's, if you're affiliated with any events, um, but you know, if you are, um, you know, you can go to, especially around social, you know, social innovation, you know, you can go and say, Hey, listen, we're running this prize. Could we announce the winner on stage at your event? Very, if, if you pick the right event, very few um, event organizers will say no to that. If, if they, if they like what you're doing, boom, now you've got this amazing recognition prize because the winner is going to be sent out, uh, you know, South by Southwest and, and, um, and awarded on stage, you know, stuff like that is further taps into people's intrinsic motivations. And, and you asked a little uh, bit about, I haven't, about the social I haven't really thought much about the social recognition prize. That's something you guys can help us help guide us on, on uh, the strategy on that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Huh. Paul, Paul, what were you going to say? I was just going to say uh, low hanging fruit could mean a lot of things. Um, and you know, you, you talked about the, the cordless drill uh, as a potential project idea, but you could even think about backing it up further to ask the crowd uh, what tool would make the most difference to their life or to the world in general and help have them have the crowd help create your story around why it's important for people to be able to open source the design and production of these sorts of manufacturing tools for themselves. Oh, and you wow. have all sorts of content to, to roll into 
the the cordless drill project that explains to the world why it's important to have that tool. Wait, so you're saying like that would be part of the like how would you structure that? Would you go with that campaign before the cordless tool challenge? Like yeah, that could be your your low hanging fruit challenge. You know, submit a video and a short essay about what tool would make the biggest impact on your life if you could 3D print it at home. How would that change the world? Tell me about it. And then you award a small prize for that. And that's that's your um you know that's dipping your toe into crowdsourcing. Uh, you yeah. could do that pretty quickly. You could get back a oh, yeah. result, and then then you you know you know what's going on for next time when you're asking people for CAD files and a drill design. That's a great idea, actually. Just crowdsource the which tool it is, because I mean, I'm open to anything that has a multi-billion-dollar impact, and there's plenty of things that can be 3D printed that that meet that. Yep. You you asked us what the right with the drill was the right tool. Ask the crowd; they'll tell you exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And you know, and part of the re part of the reward can be they they um, you know they they be, they join the judging panel for the for the the, yeah. the actual project, right? So they they get to participate. I mean, and participation is a huge incentive, right? Huh. See, because in our set, we we selected 50, 50 main products that we think are most critical to the infrastructure of civilization. Maybe we should even go back one and say, yeah. hey, what do you think are the most yeah. critical tools and then yeah and vote them up vote them down yeah absolutely yeah i mean that's the beauty of crowdsourcing is you know it's like i said it's a third form of labor so it's 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 like a nail gun right it, it can do everything a hammer can do for the most part um so as soon as you realize nail guns exist it makes you rethink yeah. all your hammer problems in a new way right. um and so um so you know that's that's why there's there's a certain amount of for you to to do this most effectively you need to kind of go back and reflect on your, your old thinking with this new insight and you'll start seeing, Oh, could we, you know, you know, rather than do that way, could we do it this way instead using the crowd? And if you can, we can actually give you a, we have a form. Um, I'm not sure if we use it that much anymore, but we have a form that kind of lets you um, evaluate um, um, the 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 fit for a, a goal a project goal into crowdsourcing which we can share with you uh, we used it at abundance 360 um, last year um, but more importantly you know uh, the we have um, our challenge success you'll get a, a a support person attached to you on challenge success who will advise you along the way um, and you know we want to make sure like we, we're a benefit company so you know, we are for profit, but we, but we're doing this uh, because of the impact it's going to have on the world. And so we yeah. want to make sure that um, a good chunk of our projects are, are nonprofit and we, we support nonprofits um, really well. And so we can do, we can help you a lot with, um, you know, as we go, including some intros um, and, and, um, and to talk about stuff. And the, but I mean, the limiting step here is going to be the amount of eyeballs that are going to look at your project. And how is that addressed? I mean, the, how do you publicize that? Or it just like really crowdfunding, like publicity, or just just like crowdfunding. So they'll they'll a certain amount of traffic. They'll, they'll just flow through our site naturally, and they'll just discover it uh -huh. on our site. Um, but it's just like crowdfunding. So you're you yeah. need to um, get out there in social media, talk about it. We have a playbook we can share with you that you know just the steps that it takes. It's it's basically you know, social media marketing one on one. Um, um, when you you, you want to maximize earn media as well, um, with uh, launching a prize is something that you can get coverage from from bloggers. You can talk about it in forums. Um, you can go to to the press and you know and say, hey, I'm doing this. Would you like to cover it? Um, so there's a, a lot you can do, but you would need to do the heavy lifting. Uh, unless you, we do have a, like I said, we do have a, a, a services group called Crowdpiper who, who do that as a service. They do the promoting for service. So especially if you've got a corporate sponsor, um, we, we can de-risk that for you completely um, with our targeted outreach services where we, we, we get, your, get your project out there and, and you know, get hundreds or thousands of, of innovators subscribed to your platform, to your project. How would we structure it if we if we want to involve Crowd Piper? I mean, can we do some initial phase where we just get some corporate yep. sponsors, some yep. Yep. upfront? Yeah, 
Yeah. Uh, Crowd Piper. Yeah, Crowd Piper. You can tap into them at any time, any any time you want, in any phase. You can do it. You start it on do it yourself, um, and then um, you know if if it gets serious, um, and you want to, um, you really want to like scale it out. Um, the the what I'll I'll guarantee with you with Crowd Piper is that um, it's we all the work that they do is fixed priced. Um, and it's super cheap, relatively speaking, because it's it's a service we offer to catalyze uh, adoption. We're not not trying to create a profitable consulting company. Um, mm -hmm. So it, it, we offer a, a decent discount to nonprofits on the service work. So um, so that an option where they would be paid on contingency also upon success of the the crowdsource or no? Yeah. Not, not currently because, you know, we're a, uh, we're a self-funding organization, as I mentioned earlier. So mm -hmm. we have limited capacity to, um, you know, to do free labor or to do deferred um, labor. We just, in, in our, in our timeline I shared with you earlier, you know, we just mm -hmm. started um, that the pay for success model is, is new. We just released that this year. Um, so our past work, you know, that you've seen oh, here, whoops. Our past, our past work all in that past was, you know, our model was, was a, a solution model where we, we did charge a lot up front. Um, and, um, and we, you know, we had a, a bevy of services that we charged, the fee we charged, we charged it up front. Um, but we've just moved now to um, the pay for success model and then the, um, divesting ourselves of the services into, um, into a separate organization um, so that we can start scaling up and, the, and scaling up, you know, I mean, if you just look at some of the brands we've got on our platform, you can kind of see um, how well that's been going. Um, we've been, you know, we've got yeah. some, yeah. I can't disclose too much, but we've got a really amazing pipeline of, of projects that we're going to be launching um, shortly. Um, it's a good time to join it because we are going to have, um, and this is, these are some of the brands you can see here that we're working with. Um, so, there's going to be a lot of traffic coming to us um, and that you'll benefit from that um, because there's a lot of click throughs that happen. Um, and the, the smaller projects get higher take ups, get, they get more take ups because, um, because, you know, not many people think they can take on a million dollar problem. That's going to take a year of their life to do. But if you've mm -hmm. got, you know, a problem that they can do in three weekends, right. It's far more easy for them to commit to that. I know we're over time, um, um, but uh, does that give you a good feeling for it? Yeah, it does. If you, if you talk about the the cordless drill challenge, what do you think? I mean, I was initially thinking 100k for that. No, you, no, you wouldn't. No, that would be too much. I think. We, uh, I should. Uh, I I just said my gut feels is too much. Um, Paul, why don't you going to talk about that? Um, uh, yeah, I think. I don't know. That's something that we'd have to look a little bit more into just to see, but I, I agree with Christian. It, it sounds like a lot. Um, the intrinsic motivation that that factor is really high with this sort of project and the ability to have some non-cash incentives in terms of participating on site and, uh, you know, actually having the, the ability to create something uh, on site with you that they're designing as part of the competition is, is huge value as part of the prize as well. So yeah. Now, yeah. now you could you could do it as um a hundred K um like goal, like um like project, but I would break I would phase one would be like, you know, um like an ideation one or a design one or you know, a some kind of semi functional prototype or, or something that's a stepping stone. Um that would be, you know, I would start with maybe five or ten K. Um it could be like phase one and you could have several phases that add up to hundred K. There is value mm -hmm. in having a large dollar value um, in terms of the, the um, you know, the, the um, um, what's the right term, like the buzz it creates, right? Um, but we wouldn't recommend you jump right into that level. Um, you know, like I said, the, the NASA space poop one, the, the grand prize was, was 15K, the total prize amounts were 30K. And you mm -hmm. know, they were asking people to, to figure out a pretty tough problem for them. It was ideation, so they didn't have to prove build anything but um but you know the the building part that's you know that's the order makes you harder because this is space right so with you what you're doing it, it'd be pretty easy to to have 
you know, a functioning prototype of maybe in limited form, uh, maybe the drive assembly or something like that, um, that you could get into a smaller prize amount for sure. Yeah, I mean, for us, I was thinking, I mean, the only way that would work is, I mean, you know, ideas are cheap in hardware. It's like proven model that's a real working prototype that meets or exceeds industry standards. So compared to a DeWalt or something, and this can drive us hard and last as long kind of deal. I mean, because you're still sourcing, you're sourcing the same parts that they are and stuff. It's just open design. So yeah. I was so still thinking it would take that much to really do it, but... Okay. Yeah, and there's nothing wrong with doing a hundred thousand dollar one um, as a, a single step. You can totally do that. Um, you just you before you make that decision, you want to look at can we decompose the problem into smaller bite-sized pieces, right. and what does it look right. like for us to gamify it? Because, like I said before, um, it's often easier. Like you know, you'll get like high school science you know classes joining a problem that they can fit into their you know their semester, right? Um, mm -hmm. and you know, and you, it's harder to, to do that with a hundred thousand dollar one where you're asking for the final solution to be delivered, you know, in one step. Do you know what I mean? Um, yeah. The, the thing that, that's really interesting to us is the idea of distributive enterprise, meaning that we, we create a product that's open source that then we promote the distributed manufacturing of you know, like every state could have a business manufacturing cordless and drills and servicing them for a lifetime yeah. and stuff like that. So uh, yes. I don't know how, like, I'd love to add that entrepreneurial aspect. Maybe, you know, maybe that will be some, some way to that in a later phase, but that's, that's really the intent to get distributed production, meaningful distributive enterprise happening. Yeah. Yeah. So I know we need to wrap up, but um, so yeah. the, the the way to do that with open source is um is to to like take your cordless drill and um decompose it into smaller you know subsystems and modules that um that you can envision are would be designed uh, independently of each other right mm -hmm. um and then um and then it, and then divide your 100 grand into okay. um um what the value is for each of those milestones set the guidelines for those, and then let the whole thing happen in parallel, right? And the, yeah. the, rule, the rule is that you have to share your submissions, you know, the, the, everything's open and shared, and that yeah. teams can leapfrog yeah. each other. And, and then you want to create um, a model where, you know, where, the, where the, there's a simple but an egalitarian way that um, credit is given if, if one team reuses the design of another team but modifies it by a certain percentage you know what i mean so I again you, ha you have to keep part. you yeah. have to keep it simple but remember yeah. in a nonprofit, they're not doing it for the money so it's not like they're going to sue you mm. if they don't like the fact that they only got 30 percent credit um on something you know they they might have you know sour grapes um although usually they don't um but they're you know they're doing it for the joy of of participating and making this thing real Right. And all the rules of the game. I mean, we set that up front in a challenge and people have to follow that simply. Like, yep. cause, cause I really, I've thought about the idea that yes, you get rewarded for how much you publish and then how much you reuse of others. So if, yeah. So focus yeah. on the collaborative aspect where you're building upon like all the collaborative contributions somehow. Yeah. So the yeah. way we typically do that um, is um, you create a, you create a, a, a an, on an uncapped point system okay so you people earn points by doing what you described and you you basically think of them as achievements that are worth a set of points um, and you design them so like for example maybe you get more points if you if you um, leverage other teams work product not less points you see what I mean um, and then at the end of the competition you add up everybody's points and that you know the top 50 scorers get two grand each, right? Or you could do yeah. it weighted. You could do it weighted, right? Um, you know where the the top 10 scorers get you know five grand each, and then the the next 10 get two grand each, and the 30 after that get one grand each or whatever. You see what I mean? The the point yeah. is that they're not doing it for the money. They're they're doing it for the sport. And so having a trophy at the end is really important. Don't get me wrong, but 
um, and you want to you want to pick a model that just makes sense to people and they get it, but you also want to pick a model that incentivizes the right behavior. Um, it, it, when you get right. into if you don't do it right, you can create scarcity and um, people hiding their designs because they want to win. You don't want to you want to reward it using an open ended point system where you're rewarding people for sharing. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Have you done examples where you're rewarding people for sharing? Like, do you have some prototypes I could yeah. look at? Um, I don't know if we have prototypes, but we've, we've, we, you know, we've done a research project, for example, where um, we were asking people to research and, and publish to a wiki and share it openly. And then um, people would vote um, for the quality of the submissions. Um, so that kind of social model um, works really well. Um, so again, we can talk. We, we should wrap up. Uh, I know I've got a okay. meeting I got to go to, but um, right. yeah. But you know, I think this gives you a lot to think about. Um, I awesome. would, um, uh, Paul. Do you want to like? W what are the follow-ups? Would you recommend here? Yeah. So I'm going to pass over a number of different things that we talked about. So the link to. Uh, a video that explains how to use the platform, a uh, link to the knowledge base, a uh, link to the challenge creation tool as well. And then as a next step, uh, we'll, we'll have you like spend a little time going through that and thinking about uh, potential projects. And then we'll schedule in a challenge creation workshop uh, with either myself, Mackenzie, or someone else from the, the challenge success team to chat through sort of what a project might look like on the Herox platform for your first go at it. Uh, and we'll, we'll schedule that in for a couple weeks. Excellent, excellent. That's awesome. I took some notes of the other things you mentioned. I'll send it up. Who should I send it over to? To you, Paul, or yep, respond you can, to everybody? You can back to me. Um, so I'll, I'll send a, a email here and, and follow up, and just you can reply to that, and that'll work great. Yeah. Well, awesome stuff. Yeah. Thanks so much. This is great. This is going to take yeah. over the world. <laughs> it is. I think so. And we're we're excited yeah. to be part of it. And we really like projects like what you're doing because they 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 really they really demonstrate the, 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 the benefit of, of this. And we're really, we're really um, engaging the, you know, the, especially the millennials, but everybody on, yeah. um, you know, being able to, to, you know, get off the couch and do something right. Um, and yeah. you're, you're connecting them to the problem or right? your job is to connect the, right. them to the problem and, and create downstream impact. Their job is to right. bring innovation to you. It's a, it's really a win-win. We'll send you the recording. Yeah. So you can you can you can share it. Um, you can share it with other people in your team, and you can review it again yeah. if you want. And you know, there's lots of we've covered a lot of ground here. Um, Excellent. So and I'm hoping. Think, my hope is that as a result of this, we were open source ecology until we met Hero X. <laughs> so yeah. that's cool. Yeah. All right. No, I think this is great. I really look forward to working with you on this. It's going to be exciting. Yeah. So. Excellent. Thanks a lot, guys. Thanks yeah. for the call. Thanks a lot. Okay. See you guys. Okay, bye. bye.